So where we left off last time was we got through deriving a solution for an extended surface, right? An extended surface, remember, is some um, domain where we have heat that actually is flowing in two coordinates now, not just one coordinate. We actually have heat flow in two coordinates, uh, X and Y in this example, right? So heat's actually going from, heat's actually, sorry, heat's actually going from here in the X direction, but also it has to go in the Y direction to get out, right? So we have this heat flow, but we're making the assumption that the temperature gradient in this direction, right, this Y direction is insignificant relative to the temperature gradient from the center line of that fin to the surroundings. Right? And we justify that using the BO number calculation. If the BO number is really, really small, then that says that we can make that assumption and it's, uh, a relatively accurate model that we're gonna come up with by using the 1D um, approximation. Okay, so we, we left off, we went through at the end and we came up with this equation for temperature, right? We said uh, temperature is a function of, oops, sorry, I'm starting on the second slide here. So we said um, temperature here is this function here. We say uh, it's, a sum, it's a sum of the homogeneous solution, right? This, this guy here is our homogeneous solution. Right, that's the solution when we set the, uh, the equation equal to zero, ignoring the right-hand side. And then we have the particular solution, which we did here using the method of undetermined coefficients. And we came up with a solution um, for, the, for the particular part. And we sum both of those back together and we get our general solution. Right, not, this is not uh, yet applicable for our specific boundary conditions that we have. But this is the general solution for this for this fin that we uh, came up with. So our task now and where we, we left off was trying to get to uh, a solution that fits this exact problem that we have, all right? So anytime you have a, a, a fin that's a, a constant cross-sectional area, here we have a rectangular fin um, that's very long uh, in, into and out of the page, but you might also have um, you know, some you know, round profile, but it's a constant cross-section, whatever. Anytime you have that, you're gonna come up with this solution, right? This, this uh, Koch and Cinch solution. You have a constant cross-section. If you don't have a constant cross-section, which we'll get to later today, you're, th this general solution is not valid, right? So this is for this specific uh, type of problem. Okay, so now our task is to enforce the boundary condition. So we're gonna start with that uh, before we get into um, what we're actually you know, continuing on with today. Okay, so first let's, let's uh, make a statement here about what we think the boundary conditions are for this problem. Okay, first let's look at, uh, right, so what's our domain? So our domain here, uh, this is the X direction, right? and then we, this is the Y just to make a note. So that's X and Y, that's our coordinate system. And we're really only trying to model um, the fin itself, right? The, the piece of metal or whatever that's extending off the surface, we're trying to come up with a temperature solution for that. So we need to look at the bounds of our domain. Right? The bounds of our domain are gonna be right, this thing here that I just drew and out here on the end, right? So we have to come up with something we know here and something we know out here. Let's say we're given this temperature TB at the base of the fin. Right, and you might make that approximation by saying, well, we can measure the temperature out here and, and we assume it's about the same. Okay, so we're given TB, that's one boundary condition. So let's actually write out, you know, what the statement of that boundary condition would be saying T at X equals zero is equal to TB, right? That's, that's all it is. And then the other boundary condition is gonna be out here at the end, right? And out the, here at the end, we say it's adiabatic, we have this, uh, you know, the, the hatching that indicates there's no heat transfer. Um, and so we would just say that Q dot, Q dot at X equals, let's see, what do we call this? L, I guess. So this, this dimension here is L. So at X equals L, uh, that equals, at X equals L, that equals, equals zero. Okay. Uh, really what we're saying then is, um, right, minus K, A, C, D, T, D, X at X equals L is zero, right? These things out here are constant, that's constant. So really we're just saying, okay, DT DX at X equals L equals zero. 
Great. That, that makes sense. The, the thing that you know, I want to point out about this um, end boundary condition is it may or may not be the case that we actually have insulation at the end of this fin. But we, if, if it turns out that, let's say the temperature profile in the fin, I'll just draw it something like this. So let's say we draw the temperature profile in the fin and it looks something like this, right? Where this is T infinity down here and this is T B up here. If it looks like that, then it, there's actually no, there's no temperature gradient out here, right? There's the, the fins already at the ambient temperature. So even if it's not insulated, we can still treat that as an adiabatic surface because there's no heat transfer across it. And in fact, for a lot of fins, the way they're designed is so that uh, the, the fin material is, is being effectively used. And so it, uh, in, in a lot of cases, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna have a heat transfer across the surface, the, the tip of the fin, okay, just because of the way the fins are often designed. Okay, well, we'll come back to that maybe a little later, but just to point that out. Okay, so let's go through and we'll actually enforce the boundary conditions. All right, so the, for the first one, let's look at, so we'll call this one, we'll call this two. Okay, so for, for boundary condition one, let's, let's evaluate this. This is T at X equals zero is equal to TB. And so what's T at X equals zero? We have our temperature expression over here. So we just need to substitute in the values there. So we'd say um, C1, Cosh of M times X is zero, right? And then plus C2 cinch of M at zero plus T infinity, right? Uh, so, okay, cosh and cinch. Um, you probably have seen these before, but it's worth reminding yourselves what those things are. Okay, so those again are the hyperbolic cosine and sine. They're def defined in terms of exponentials usually, there's a, a transform between exponentials and, and these, but really when you look at these, you can think of them as basically sine and cosine. They're just slightly different, right? Uh, not only that the H is there, but they behave a little differently. But really in terms of how, how they're um, evaluated, they're very similar. So, you know, cosine of, of zero is one, right? Cosh of zero is one. So we end up with uh, our statement being TB is equal to C1, Right, cosh of zero is one, okay, so plus C2, cinch of zero is zero, so that goes away. So that goes away entirely, plus T infinity. So this is saying then, uh, if I solve for C1, that's just uh, TB minus T infinity, right? Um, easy enough, okay, so that's, that's our first constant. Then the second one, let's enforce the second boundary condition. All right, so second boundary condition is dt dx equals zero. So we need to take the derivative, right? This again is our temperature expression. We need to take the derivative of this guy. Uh, so let's just write it out as we're doing. So dt dx, dt dx at x equals L is equal to, okay, so what's the derivative of the first term? C1 cosh mx, it's gonna be C1 times m times, uh, right, so what's the derivative of, of cosh? Behaves a lot like sine and cosine. The only difference is that uh, the derivative of, si of uh, cinch and cosh never switch signs, right? And sine and cosine, sometimes it'll switch back and forth. And here it's always, always positive, or always the same sign. Okay, so it's uh, now C1 times M, you know, where do we go? C1 times M times, um, what was the derivative? It's, it's cinch of M at L, right? Plus C2 cosh of C2 M, M in there. C2 M cosh of M at L. Okay, and then T infinity goes away, right? And then this is all equal to zero. Okay, um, so now we can go back and uh, let's see. Yeah, so now we can go back and substitute in uh, C1. Um, so let's actually just write this out. So C1, first let's solve this for C2. Okay, so C2 is equal to minus C1 uh, cinch of ML divided by cosh of ML. Okay, um, so this is actually, 
uh, another way of writing this is minus C1 times tanh, T-A-N-H, hyperbolic tangent of ML, okay. Okay, so now we have our solution for uh, C1. C1 can be substituted in there uh, and we can calculate C2. Okay, so put all this together. Uh, we end up with the following. So let me just, I'm gonna write over on the left to give myself a little room. So T is equal to T infinity plus uh, TB minus T infinity, that's C1, cosh of MX minus TB minus T infinity times tanh of ML times cinch of M times X. Okay, so that's our full solution, All right? This is now the temperature solution for this fin or this extended surface, given our specific boundary conditions that we're looking at, right? Known temperature, and no one heat transfer, uh, which is zero at the boundary. Question? Uh, M, right, so M is our fin constant. Let's see, so M, uh, M we, def we defined that earlier uh, for this particular situation is usually uh, perimeter times, what is it? Perimeter times K over H bar AC, something like that. Let me just look back. Ah, oh, thank you. Perimeter H bar over K, K AC, uh, square root of that. Right, that came out of that came out of the specific geometry we have here. So M is not always the same thing. Right, M changes depending on the geometry that you have, the resistance to the surroundings that you have. Okay, so that's what it was for this case. Okay, um, so one thing that we normally do is. Uh, Rewrite this. I mean, we've got kind of a few things going on. We have TB minus T infinity appearing in a couple of places. We've got these uh, trigonometric or, or um, yeah, uh, hyperbolic uh, functions, and we can kind of simplify it a little bit further. So, one way we can write this uh, is T minus T infinity over TB minus T infinity. Right? This is kind of a non dimensional temperature, right? Temperature at any location with respect to the reference divided by the max and min uh, difference. So that's a non dimensional temperature. Okay, that gives us then uh, on the right hand side, cosh of ML times X over L, right? We're just multiplying by L over L. And we'll kind of see why in a second. Minus tanh of ML times cinch of ML times X over L. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is get things in, in terms of non-dimensional coordinates, right? So we have our non-dimensional temperature on the left and then our non-dimensional position X over L. Okay, any, any questions on this so far? Right, this, this is our solution now, right? This is the solution for the fin. We know the temperature at any position using this analytical expression. 